Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and today I'm checking out from Essence, the Keep Me Covered Foundation, Long Lasting Foundation that is, retails for $6.99 for one ounce or 30 milliliters of product. It is currently getting 1.6 out of 5 stars with only 7 reviews because it is brand new on Ulta's website. Oh, I didn't count how many shades. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 shades, I believe. I have this in shade porcelain and maybe I'm, maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but I need to share my fear. <laughs> All right, this is how it looks online. Let me try to get the reflection of the ring light out of there and maybe some focus. So you see, it's, uh, look how light it is. That's a huge, like, I was trusting that this, I usually look at the swatches, not the little graphic design labely thing, because those are never accurate, but I usually look at the swatches. This looks way lighter. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm panicking for no reason. When I do the swatches, we'll find out because I haven't recorded them yet. But uh, this is described as, oh, let's get back to the description here. Get natural looking and long lasting coverage with Essence. Keep me covered, long lasting foundation. That That's it. <laughs> There's nothing for me to even give any side eye for. Uh, the only thing that I gave side eye for like, oh, interesting. Uh, it is a silicone free foundation. I don't see any additional fragrance listed in the ingredients. It's also paraben free and free of microplastics. I've never seen that as a claim on a foundation, but it's cruelty free and vegan. So let's take a look at this shade porcelain swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from Essence, the Keep Me Covered Long Lasting Foundation in Porcelain. Second, I've got from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is MAC Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last, I've got from Wet n Wild, the Tinted Hydrator in Fair. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 48-year-old face. I will go in with a damp sponge on one side, Elf Ultimate Blending Brush on the other, minus the cat hair. We will see if there's a preference one way or the other. Let's take a look at what is going on here. All right. I did prime with the Calorie So Blown, one of my current favorites. Whoa. Oh, my fears were freaking accurate. Okay, well, you know, we're just gonna look a little ghostly today. We are gonna need some bronzer. <laughs> I mean, if you go by my hands, I'm pretty pale. So it's not like it's a stretch, but I have been choosing, I'm gonna go in with just a little bit more because I feel like when the shade is too light it's uh, harder to get coverage without it looking strange. So I've been leaning you know maybe a half shade to a shade darker than I would normally pick as a match for me because I feel like the lighter shades do more clinging and accentuating of flaking and things like that. So yeah, this is this is about a shade too light for me, but I'm getting a little, no, I'm not. I was gonna say I'm getting cancellation of redness, but really all I'm seeing is the difference between the shade being too light and my actual color because this is all still showing redness. So, coverage, yeah, my nostril's pretty, pretty red too. Coverage with the sponge is not, I'd say we're still very, very light coverage. Let's try the brush side. Wow, that's light. That is so poorly indicated on the website. That is so far off that 
I mean, this is way not what was shown in the photo swatch. It just, it's just nowhere near. <laughs> and I'm glad that they have shades that are this, this fair for the people that need fair shades. But, uh, good luck getting the right shade if you're buying it online because that was so off, so far off. And it didn't surprise me, like this wasn't even the lightest shade and it didn't surprise me picking that shade because the, it, it's, it's not unusual for me to be a couple shades off from the lightest. So I think this was the second or third lightest. Okay, let's see what we got. I'm looking in my 10X here. Um, uh, the problem is that it, it's just on top of the skin. It's not blending. It's not, all I see is product. Even in the areas where, you know, my cheeks, I'm, I'm pale. I know I'm pale. So like that should be a nice, easy place to get confirmation. And it's even like, I have no skin issues over here. This is my good side of my face. It's not the textured sun damaged side. This is all nice and smooth. And all I see is the product sitting on top of the skin. It's not, it's not blending out. It's just sitting there clinging to, it's not even clinging to dry patches because I don't really have too many going on right now. It's, it's just clinging to my face, <laughs> which I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tap it out and make it not blotchy. It's just kind of, oh, 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 I made my nose a lot worse. Okay. Okay. Let's try to even this out. I did get a little bit better coverage with the brush. So if you're going for coverage, the brush over the sponge might be the way to go. The sponge side looks fine in terms of which application tool would be best, but it does seem to build up. Like I'm building over my darkest sunspots here. The problem is it it's almost like I feel like I've put a layer of paint on and I just see the layer of paint. Oh, it's, it's just finding all the imperfections. That's all it's doing. It's just finding all the imperfections, which, oh, can we please have some coverage on my chin? Please, just a little bit, just a little bit. Get rid of some of this red. Same with my nostril. Okay, okay. Same with the texture between my eyebrows. Okay, here's my hope. My hope is that giving this a little time to warm up and maybe melt into the skin a bit more will be helpful. Sometimes that's a thing. So I'm going to keep rocking. All right, let's zoom and get a look at this. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be optimistic. Uh, my chin is a hot mess. It's sinking into all my chin pores. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tolerate that. I, it's not terrible on my cheeks. Although, I mean, all I, I just see it sitting on top of my skin, my nose. It's also sinking into the nose pores. It's kind of just caked on my nose. It's not too bad between my eyebrows and it's, oh, it's even settling into some forehead pores, which I didn't fully realize I had forehead pores. But here we are, and uh, that's, that's, uh, we're not off to the best start. It's finding all of my pores, which is kind of funny because I did use primer, so it shouldn't be finding all of my pores. I'm going to go ahead with my day because really I'm just running a bunch of errands and I'm going to put on a lot of bronzer right now. And if I look like a fool, then I look like a fool. What time is it? Wow, I got a lot of notifications here. Uh, some Pokemon stuff. It is 309, 310. Let me go put the rest of my face on. I will be right back.
back with the essence keep me covered no improvement in the foundation settled into pores and it has started settling into my deeper lines so like my chin lines I've been kind of digging it out of there and it is settling into my forehead lines my deeper ones my three <laughs> forehead lines which I've been attempting to tap out and so that's happening. Everything seemed to blend fine. I even did experiment putting, this is the Euphoria blush oil. It's like a color changing blush oil and I love it. And so I wanted to see how it responded to a liquid product or a cream product over uh, the foundation. And it seemed to have held up okay. I don't think it moved the foundation around too much. So really the main issue I've got with this one so far is that it's settling into my pores it's settling into lines and it's just not blending smoothly, but love the euphoria. I'm also wearing my, no surprise here, Heat Wave Bronzer from Flower Beauty. My eyes, first time using this palette, ColourPop, pretty, pretty please. It's only called pretty please, but now I have pink in my head. Won't you ever, ever, never, never, why? Well, I don't know what the words are. And it's got a swear word, so I'm gonna stop singing now. Uh, because of course I listen to the explicit version. I don't swear here, but I curse like a trucker in my real life. Ah, it's so pretty though. Uh, nice and soft. The only thing I'll say, love their color curation. The undertones are spot on, but the shimmers are a little lackluster compared to the usual color pop shimmers. And I mean that quite literally, lackluster. Uh, but it's so pretty. What can I, I, I still love it. I still love it. It's so pretty. My brows are the Lawless. I've been enjoying this. The Hold Up Soft Set Brow Wax. This is the medium to dark shade. I did not fill in with a pencil today. I just did the wax. Liner is from e.l.f. Of course, it doesn't say what the name of the product is because that's like an infamous thing e.l.f. does. So the liquid liner is that. Don't know what prompted me to wear liquid liner today. That just happened. Mascara is Merit. And my lip is, I dug out an old Wayne Goss lip gloss. I haven't worn these in a while. This one is in Cherry Blossom. It's not quite the right undertone for this look, but it's fine. That's fine. I'm gonna switch back to just wearing my lip balm. This is the Color Street Tinted Lip Balm uh, throughout the day because my lips are peeling like crazy. I've been so bad at my evening skincare. I've not been doing my lip mask at all. And um, it's winter. My lips are rough. <laughs> but anyway, here's the look we are going out with my earrings. I made them. I'm going to attempt to remember to link anytime I'm wearing earrings that I made because I have a handmade shop called Corky Creators. Uh, my friend Judy, my business partner and I, and uh, you can get a pair of these on our website, quirkycreators.com. So I link everything I'm wearing, the whole kit and caboodle down in the info box down below. Feel free to check them out. I appreciate your support. Okay, I think that's all the things. Guess where I'm going to get a sandwich and to the post office to drop off some orders and to get a sandwich. I'm so hungry. All right, I'm going to go about my day. I'll get you guys daylight check-in out there. I'm pointing to my window <laughs> and I'll come back tonight, give you guys my final thoughts. 12.46 a.m. That puts us, I believe, right around the nine hour mark. Let's take a look at how the Keep Me Covered Long Lasting Foundation from Essence held up. Well, had I not been completely occupied by my Dungeons and Dragons game for the past four hours, in which I could not get up and wash my face or finish the outro to this video, uh, I would have taken this off sooner. It feels very drying. I feel like I've got all my drag lines, all that tightness happening in the dehydratedness of my skin. So it's not super comfortable if you have dry skin. And well, let's zoom in and get a look at what we're looking at. So, I'm not sure I've ever seen my chin be much worse than this. The product is just blotchy and 
caked up all over the place, all over my chin. Some of it's still in my pores. Some of it just moved around and blotched up. It's just not cute. Ignore the tip of my nose. I did have to blow my nose several times today. However, if you look on the bridge of my nose, uh, you can see all the pores that the foundation is still stuck in. Blush bronzer highlight stayed put, which tells me that it's possible that this foundation might work better for people that don't have fine lines or pores. Well, don't we all have pores, I suppose. Um, forehead, it settled a little bit into deeper lines. It settled into my chin lines as well. I can see all the micro wrinkles on my forehead because my forehead is now pretty well dehydrated. And it's, well, I'm, uh, let's just say I'm not surprised. It kind of started out this way and didn't, didn't really get any better. So the thing that does surprise me though is for a foundation that put the words long lasting right in the subtext of the name of the foundation, I mean, nine hours is not long lasting. <laughs> Like, long last, long lasting. Like, if you're going to call it long wear, long lasting, that to me is 14 plus. I'd even take 12 hours plus. That to me means I can go have a full day at work, which I, it, it, 10 hour days are the norm, plus my commute time. Maybe go out and get food or drinks afterward. Like, that's long wear. Something's going to take me you know, beginning to end on a bridal party day or something like that. That's, that's not nine hours. Nine hours is kind of like minimal accepted performance for anything that calls itself a foundation in my book. But anyway, I'm finding the words in the titles don't seem to mean much lately. <laughs> but, so if I had to give a grade to the essence, keep me covered. I'm gonna go D. I don't, it's not the worst thing ever, but if you have dry skin, I would avoid it. If you've got maturing skin, including fine lines or larger pores, I would avoid it. You know, products that are just made for perfect skin, you know, I'm, I'm not wearing foundation to cover up my perfect skin. I'm wearing foundation because I have issues that I would like to improve upon. And uh, this one's not doing it for me. So we're going to go D for the Keep Me Covered foundation. Have you guys tried it? Have you picked this one up? What was your experience? Let me know in the comments down below, as well as any foundations you would like me to add to my list to purchase and review. I will get on that ASAP. I buy them whenever I can. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.